As you know, we're using two different textbooks for the course. The main textbook we studied in the last class about product adaptation, right? And it has the quiz and the website. But we're also using this kind of mini textbook, uh, Global Marketing, okay? So this one is shorter, but sums up the main points about each topic, okay? So we're going to look at this book, just one page or a page and a half about product adaptation, okay? So, some products are better than others for global standardization, uh, depending on the type of product. So, what types of products are better for global standardization? What do you think? Can you give me an example of a product which we don't need to adapt much? It can be standardized. Cars. Anything else? talked about uh, fast moving consumer goods, like L'Oreal's products. Do fast moving consumer goods need to be standardized or, or customized? Hmm? What, what about L'Oreal? Was L'Oreal customizing or not its products? Yes, they do customize, right? So fast moving consumer goods, we need more customization, okay? But car is not so much a fast-moving consumer good, okay? Anything else that can be standardized? Infrastructure. If we build a metro in one line, we can build a metro line in another city the same, okay? Or the roads, okay? So just some products, it depends on the product. So uh, Warren Keegan suggests this adaptation strategy, okay? for the uh, entering international markets that include ways to extend, adapt, or create. So the simplest of these strategies requires no change to the product or the supporting communications. This can work well with high-end consumer goods. Okay? Do you understand high-end consumer goods? Can you give me an example of high-end consumer goods? Luxury product like what? Jewelry, right? We don't need to change much. Handbags, can you buy the same handbag in Italy as in China? Luxury handbag, luxury sports cars, luxury yachts, right? High end products. Uh, many business to business industrial products we just talked about in the last class. Okay, business to business product doesn't need as much customization. Okay? The messaging and the benefits are similarly perceived across the borders. Okay, so people have the same, we talked about people's perception of quality. For these kind of products, people have the same perception of quality. Okay, not that different. But this strategy is not as effective with consumer products, like we talked about with L'Oreal, that tend to be much more representative of local cultures. Okay, so shampoo more representative of the local culture. They, in the UK, they like the spring smell, for example. In China, they like a lemon smell, okay? They have different type of hair, okay? Shampoo works better in some countries. In some cases, companies can effectively reposition the product using very varying communication strategies. For example, IBM modifies its positioning for the, its service business, emphasizing its money-saving benefits in the cost conscious United States and its modernization capabilities in developing countries. Okay? So IBM does consulting, service business. Do you understand consulting? It comes to the company and it helps them to improve their software and improve their technology. Okay? So when it's marketing its uh, product in the US, it communicates, we're going to save you money with this new technology, okay? Save time and money because maybe the labor cost is higher in the US. But in developing country, they will tell them, oh, you need to have a modern company. It might cost more money. It might cost more money than hiring people, but it modernizes your company, right? So they have different communication. In, even though they can use the same products, they have a different communication. 
So this is the, then we can see we have three choices. Don't change the product, adapt the product, develop a, a new product, completely change the product, like McDonald's in India. Okay? Adapt the product, like L'Oreal changing the shampoo. Don't change the product. Okay? Luxury handbags. IBM, they change the communication. We, we keep the same product, but we change our advertising, change our communication. Other companies uh, keep the same communication. So we can have this, this kind of box with these choices. <coughs> so in most cases, product adaptation is necessary. So most of your products, you're going to need to adapt your product. Okay? Research has indicated that the average product requires four to five adaptations out of a set of 11 marketing elements. So the last time we looked at different elements, right? Like packaging, materials, colors, name, product features. So you're going to need, if you just say in your presentation you just have one adaptation, it's not enough, right? The average is about four or five from the, all of the lists that we saw, the circles we saw in the last class, okay? You need to be changing at least four or five of those things, not just one of those things, okay? So this can be done by, while maintaining consistent marketing communications. Automobile, car, you mentioned cars. Car companies frequently accomplish this through minor variations to the same basic model, okay? So that we have the Hyundai car is the same in most countries, okay? And they just make the small variation, like change the steering wheel, okay? Or one country is hotter than the other country, so they have better air conditioning systems, that kind of thing, okay? Or by adapting both the product and the communications to fit a particular market need of perceptions of value and quality. So we saw that Hyundai adapted their communications in China, okay? They they changed their slogan, okay? The car target market was different, okay? Or the people's reason for buying the car is different. So they changed some part of the communication, the slogan. These adaptations can be by region, by country, or even by city, targeting broader or more specific consumer groups. So an example here is Euro Disney. Okay, there was a good success of Tokyo Disneyland, which is almost identical to Disneyland in California. So the company thought, we don't need to modify our product for Europe. We didn't change our product for Japan, Disneyland, and it was very successful. So we don't need to change it much for Europe. Okay? So, but the French is different culture. French consumers don't really like being forced to follow other cultures. French are a very proud race. Okay? France and England had a war for 150 years. A hundred years ago in Europe, French used to be the same status as English. Everything was English and French. Even 50 years ago, the UN, official language, French and English. So French people are not happy these days. Why? Nobody cares about French anymore. Right? So actually the English, which country in Europe has the worst English level? In Western Europe, France is one of the countries with the worst English level, okay? Because they're quite proud of French language and French culture, and they think French, French should be an important global language, okay? Is anybody learning French here? Anybody study French? No, in Europe people don't. I studied French in school, in Ireland, but these days German is more important than French, or Spanish is more important than French, okay? So France is falling back in the list, okay? So, friend, so the Disney American corporate values didn't work well in France, okay? Uh, rebranded as Disney, they had to change, first they just called Disneyland, then it, the customers were low, so they changed the name to Disneyland Paris, include some French in the name, okay? And they made other changes to better suit the local culture and customs. So Disneyland is now the biggest tourist attraction in Europe, Disneyland Paris, okay? So at the start, they didn't adapt, they failed, they got a new CEO, adapted things to make more French, and it started to be successful, okay? 
So when product extension and adaptation strategies are not suitable for a foreign market, companies can do true innovation, creating a new product to target a specific foreign market. <coughs> so when approaching the Chinese market, Nike realized it would need to make some adjustments, including in its aggressive Just Do It campaign. In China, harmony is important and non-dissent, right? Do you understand harmony? In Korea, harmony is important. But Nike likes competition, right? US culture is more, let's compete against each other and see who wins. It's going to make us work harder and try harder rather than having the harmonious situation. So we talked about the individualism. It's one of the main conflicts between Chinese and Western culture, Asian and Western culture. Asian culture, harmony, okay? Western culture, I don't care if you like me, right? If we have harmony or not. Sometimes in Western country, they think it's better. Too comfortable relationship means we're not, if we're too comfortable, it's too convenient, we're not performing well. So they think there needs to be some problem in the group, okay? Some conflict and competition, and then it makes the people perform better, okay? So some students studied in Australia or Canada, right? Maybe you noticed the society is not as harmonious, right? People not as worried about harmony in the group, okay? So Nike has to change this Just Do It campaign in China, and it needs to change the price of its shoes. Do you buy Nike shoes? Is anybody wearing Nike shoes today? How much did they cost? Kyle uh, Manwan, that's not too bad. It's okay. Sometimes they call e ship Manwan or Sam ship Manwan. Hmm? Sometimes some of the runners. Very expensive. So they, they created an entirely new shoe to be manufactured in China, okay? L'Oreal sometimes did the same thing, create an entirely new product, okay? Uh, so they're going to use less quality material, lower quality material in the shoe going to be much cheaper. Less expensive materials and they had a local advertising campaign using Chinese athletes and custom messaging. So we already explained Nike had the big mistake in China where they made the advertisement of Michael Jordan competing against himself and in the end he kills himself. Right? He kills his ghost. But it was a disaster in China because people didn't like that he killed himself. It was like suicide or something like that. So they had to make the custom, custom messaging in China. So we're going to watch this short video. So this is Kiko Man. We already looked at the case study of Kiko Man. Do you remember? We talked about their, how the company changed their strategy over the time, right? As they grew, they started off by exporting. Then they started doing joint ventures. And then finally they did an FDI in the US. Now it manufactures most of its sauce in the US and it sells its sauce all over the world. Okay, so let's see, uh, they, he said they levered a think from the outside in versus from the inside out strategy in approaching the US marketplace. <coughs> Kikoman is the world's largest seller of soy sauce, uh, the biggest marketer, the most successful marketer of soy sauce. It's a large company that comes from Japan. They're, they were hoping to be very successful in a very large food and beverage market, the United States. They entered the US in the 1950s. They entered, as most Japanese firms do from the West Coast in California, and they were selling soy sauce mostly to Asian grocery stores along the West Coast. They sold very little volume because in the 1950s, Americans were not used to consuming soy sauce. It was a foreign product. It was an exotic product. You usually encountered it in a Chinese restaurant when you went to eat out. You used very little soy sauce in your food. And they couldn't figure out how to make it more successful in America and how to sell more soy sauce. 
And then the chairman of the company, in visiting the U.S., studied the way that American consumers consume food. And he said, I learned something about the differences between the way that Americans eat food and Japanese eat food. Two main differences. One is, Americans don't eat a lot of sushi. In Japan, we eat a lot of sushi. And when we eat sushi, we dip a little piece of sushi in a little bit of soy sauce and eat the sushi. Second major difference is, Americans eat a lot more meat, especially beef, than we do in Japan. Beef is much more expensive in Japan than it is in America. So we sat down and we said, you know, rather than trying to get American consumers to behave like Japanese consumers, why don't we change the way that we sell our products and make those products acceptable to American consumers? So we manufactured a barbecue marinade called teriyaki that was made for American consumers to dip their large pieces or to soak their large pieces of barbecue meat in, and then they'd throw this marinade out, and our volume of soy sauce went through the roof. So you can just imagine now, huge lesson here, rather than trying to get a consumer to change to your way of doing things, change your product to suit what the consumer wants to do, how they live their lives. The way that I put this is, an easy way of thinking about this is, when you're thinking about marketing your product, think from the outside in, not from the inside out. Think from the customer in to your firm, rather than from your firm out to the customer. Okay, so I'll discuss with your group, what was the main point of the video? What did you learn from the video? as well about the Korean cosmetics company. Okay? They look at the way that American women use cosmetics. So we can't sell them the same package of cosmetics because they don't spend as much time. Okay? So we need to change. We have the Korean brand, it's Korean cosmetics, but we can change the product okay? to make it easier to use or shorter time. Okay? So we study the people, study the customers, and change our product according to the customers. Okay? Do you have any question about that? That's called, uh, he said, thinking, think from the outside in. Think from the customer back to your company, rather than from your company to the customer. Okay? So you guys need to think that way too, for your product. How do the customers use, right? There was one group who was doing flowers, right? I asked them, how do people in Finland use flowers? What kind of flowers do they use for the funerals, for the weddings? Okay? How often do they buy flowers? Why do they use flowers? What type of flowers do they use? Okay? So we have to think about the customer and customer 
behavior and change the product, not the customer. So let's look at an uh, example of Sunbeam. Sunbeam also achieved great success through the development of a new global product platform. So one way around the trade-off between the efficiency and market suitability is to design a global product platform that can be altered, changed inexpensively to accommodate the requirements of different national markets. Do you understand iron? Do you iron your clothes or does your mother iron your clothes? You do your own ironing? What about you? I don't do Don't do it. Your mother does? No, nobody does. No ironing? Don't need yet? Yes? Okay. I try to avoid ironing too. You need to your clothes. Sometimes I send to the dry cleaner. It comes back like this. Sometimes I do ironing. I'm not good at ironing. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> my mother always did my ironing, but nowadays women won't do the ironing, right? My wife won't do any ironing for me. It's modern, modern day, modern day life, right? So, the Global Steam Iron was designed by Sunbeam and its affiliate Rowenta, and it provides an early example of success. In this case, engineers, marketers, and executives of two companies were brought together to review market research and to study the products of two key competitors. Two committees were created, a marketing com committee charged with determining the feature set required by customers in different markets. So the marketing com committee is finding out about the customers and their behavior and a technical committee charged with creating a design capable of providing those key features and satisfying regulatory standards. So first, we find out what the customers want, and then we make the design. Okay, we have the design team. The final platform design, when compared with Sunbeam's existing steam iron, made major reductions in parts and fasteners. Fasteners is just a part of the iron. Its elements were so modular that the company could manufacture a wide variety of derivative irons from the same platform while still re retaining a cost advantage. The Sunbeam Global Iron was introduced in 1986 and immediately boosted the company's annual iron sales by more than 300%. So here they are trying to, they make an iron, a kind of a standard iron that can be changed easily and cheaply. Okay? They make the design that they can change the feature very quick, easily or quickly for the different country. It doesn't cost much to change the things. So then, uh, packaging is one important part. So packaging is branding and also promotional. So packaging is important. Okay? So when considering global markets, we have to think about several things when we're thinking about our packaging. So packaging is something that probably you're going to need to change in your product. Okay? So we have to think about shipping. So if we make the packaging too light, how can we ship the product? Okay? It may get damaged going for the long distance. Why don't they sell much Korean kimchi in, in the UK or the US? Why don't they sell much kimchi? Do you know? People don't like? What about Korean people? All right, there's also a problem with the shipping of kimchi. The gas builds up in the package. The packet might explode. Okay? If it's left for a long time, that kind of thing. So you'd have, if you're selling kimchi in another country, you need to make a special packaging for the shipping. Okay? Uh, functio functionality. Okay? In the United States, they like convenience, but other countries like functional ones. So we talked about good for the environment. Plastic and disposable containers are wasteful. So they like the functional package, not that exciting or so on, but US like more convenient package. US is not very good at the environmentally friendly things, right? Maybe the US creates the most waste per person in the world every year. Uh, aesthetics means how does it look? Okay? So we talked already about colors in China. Red is the light color, right? We talked about in Saudi Arabia, 
other countries. We have different colors. Some countries, like white in India, is for funerals or mourning. Green is disease in Malaysia. So we have to think about what color, what color is good for our packaging in the different country. Labeling. So you need to check about the regulations. Okay? It sounds like some boring thing, but we need to do that. Okay? Doing some countries have different laws and regulations. We talked about laws and regulations, so we have to include the ingredients on the packaging. Uh, these days, the UK is having a debate about leaving the EU. They interviewed one small company, and they said one reason they want to leave the EU because of the packaging regulation. They, are, they had to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds to change their packets last year. They produced salmon. Guess what they had to write on the package? Do you know salmon? Yeah. Yeah. Because of the EU regulation, they had to write contains fish on the package. Right? So they had to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds to write contains fish on the salmon package. Everybody can see it's salmon, right? So they said, we don't like that regulation, so we want to leave the EU. Right? Do you understand? So different regulations in different places, we have to change packaging. So uh, local customs, uh, we, in Africa they often use the picture on the package rather than the uh, writing. Okay? Uh, there was a case, I don't know if I already told you, where a company was selling baby food in Africa. They put a baby on the can, right? Some African people thought, what's that? They're selling babies, right? Because their packaging is used to the picture on the outside, is what's on the inside, okay? So different people have different customs. Uh, in the United States, we have multi-packs. We said in developing countries, people like purchasing just one cigarette or one beer. Uh, other costs. Uh, in Japan, manufacturers need to pay for the recycling costs of the packaging. So you have to think, if I'm selling in Japan, I need to make packaging that uh, is cheap for recycling. Okay? So a package that can serve across cultures should also be designed with the value of the different cultures in mind. With newly introduced products, the essential function of a multicultural package is to become a recognized brand over time. Brand recognition is crucial and can make designing for a broad spectrum of cultures quite difficult. So we're back to the, what we studied with the Hyundai case. Okay? We want to have some part of the brand has to be global, like the logo and the name in English. Okay? But we need to adapt some part of the packaging for the local tastes. Okay? So we need to keep some part to keep the global brand and adapt some part. So you, you will need to think about that. So do you have any question about, we are finished talking about the adaptation. Do you have any question about adapting the products? No? Okay, so uh, next topic is going to be the promotion and adverti international advertising. So we looked at those last page and a half from the book, it was like summary, right? Conclusion again of the, uh, what we studied about adapting the products. So let's look at the international advertising. So an important word for international advertising is Integrated Marketing Communications, called IMC. What does integrated mean? What does integrated mean? Combining, putting together, okay? So it means that, what different types of promotion or advertising do we do? Marketing do we do? Can anybody tell me? Tell me the different ways that companies do advertising and promotion. Where do companies advertise? TV. Internet. 
newspapers? SNS. SNS? Also, screen shops. Shops, radios, Sports. events, PR, you understand PR? Integration means that uh, all of these things are integrated, they're working together. Okay? So it's composed of advertising, sales, promotion, trade show, personal selling, direct selling, public relations. Okay, all of these elements, we're trying to sell the product. Okay? For most companies, advertising, like TV, radio, so on, and personal selling are the most important components in the product communication mix. Personal selling, selling to people directly, face to face. Okay, business to business, personal selling is important. Okay, so when we do these things together, we want to achieve synergy. Do you understand synergy? Yes. Teams should have synergy. You have, let's say, your, your capability is 10 points. Your capability is 10 points. Your capability is 10 points. So is your team capability just 30 points? Right? If you have synergy, it's going to be more than 30 points. Okay? Because maybe you know specifically about uh, <coughs> economic analysis, and you know best about cultural analysis, and you know best about product adaptation. So in the end, because we all have our separate, and then we can help each other with things, we can make a synergy, and we can get better result as a team. So. It's the same for integrated marketing communications. We want to do something from advertising is helping our personal selling. Our personal selling is helping our public relations. Okay? Public relations is helping trade show. Okay? So all of the marketing should be working together and uh, helping us to achieve the objective of the successful sale. So this is uh, integrated marketing communications. So. Uh, <coughs> next is sales promotions. So we have to do the sale promotion in international market. It's going to be different than our own markets. Okay? Sales promotions is activities that stimulate consumer purchases and improve the retailer or middleman effectiveness and cooperation. They are short-term efforts directed to the consumer or retailer to achieve the specific Objective. So, for example, product sampling. Do you understand product sampling? Yes. Have you? What kind of products have you sampled? Cosmetics. You sampled cosmetics, makeup. Yes. Lotion. Lotion. What other products did you sample? For kind of a massage. Yeah. It's kind of a Okay, so you understand. If you go to E-Mart on the Saturday, you can get free dinner, right? <laughs> That's what I do every weekend with my wife. And I ask her, do you want to go out for dinner? <laughs> then she puts on the dress and handbag, and then we go to E-Mart. <laughs> and we walk around, and I say, oh, there's some sausage, and it's like buffet. Right? Yogurt and sausage. Right? I can recommend I can recommend to the guys, right, if you have some first date. It's very effective for the first date. Usually girls are very impressed because they get a lot of variety of food. Right? Would you like that on the first date? Okay, so uh, do you I think that's all we have time for today. So let's finish there for today.